Today we light all the candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. The second candle is peace. The third candle is joy. The fourth candle is love. The center candle is the Christ candle. That's it. And if you pass it to Scarlett, she can light her too. Oh, you need to bring it. There we go. That's it. Pass it to Scarlett. And then Seth can light the middle one. There we go. Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. O God of hope, peace, joy and love, as Mary and Joseph welcomed you into the world, now help us welcome you into our lives. Give us courage to hope, strength to seek peace, fill our spirits with joy, and our hearts with love, through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all. Amen. Welcome to our Christmas communion. And please join with me in saying the responses to our gathering prayer. Beloved God, source of all that is, in you we live and move and have our being. Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us, with you we walk the way of love. Creator Spirit, fire of our lives, through you we are made one. God, Trinity of love, community of life, we, we are, are made in your image. We are many and we are one. We are made in your image. Our hearts seek your face and we praise you. The Lord is here. God is with us.
Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have eternal life. Let us ask for his light in the darkness of our sin. Father God, giver of light and grace, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love where we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness where we feel hurt and where we have wounded others, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And so may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sin, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for this season. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. A reading from Hebrews chapter 1. Going through a long line of prophets, God has been addressing our ancestors in different ways for centuries. Recently, he spoke to us directly through his Son. By his Son, God created the world in the beginning, and it will all belong to the Son at the end. This Son perfectly mirrors God and is stamped with God's nature. He holds everything together by what he says. Powerful words. After he finished the sacrifice for sins, the Son took his honoured place high in the heavens, right alongside God, far higher than any angel in rank and rule. Oh
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, not of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray that you'll just shine new light onto these truths as we listen to you this time. Amen. I recently heard Mark Carney, the former governor of the Bank of England, give his first wreath lecture. He was thinking about why financial values have come to be considered more important than human ones. And he really captured my attention because he was putting an underlying message of faith there. So afterwards, I looked into a bit more of his backstory. He's a Catholic. Because of his and the Archbishop's connections with the City of London, they've obviously had discussions. And he has read Justin Welby's book, Dethroning Mammon. So he is looking into some of this from a faith perspective. And it's fascinating how he was reflecting on the way values within society have changed and the drift of values in society. So he was lamenting that drift from moral to market sentiments. And he actually said, beliefs are part of the social capital that provides the social framework for the free market. And as he unpacked what he meant by values, some of those values were similar to the kingdom values that we've been looking at for the past year. So he was looking at integrity and trust and fairness. And he was saying how we as a society have changed from being altruistic to much more selfish traits and how this impacts on the whole of not just our lives but our financial lives and everything. 
I can't begin to repeat here all of what he said, so I would suggest the best thing for you to do is to go to look at his lectures. But some of the things that he said I just want to draw out very briefly. So three of the paradoxes of values that he unpacked and that great thinkers keep dwelling upon are these three. The first thing he said is why, when water is so essential to life, is it virtually free? But diamonds, with their limited utility beyond their beauty, are so expensive. And then he asked, why do financial markets rate Amazon as one of the world's most valuable companies, but the Amazon does not appear on any ledger until it is stripped of its foliage and turned into farmland. And then he was asking, how do we reconcile our celebrations of the extraordinary values of public service, dedication, heroism that we've seen amongst our care workers, our health workers, and reconcile that with the low wage and perilous working conditions that they have. You can discuss that later and over Christmas. How do we, how do we reconcile these different values? And the important thing that he was saying was that we have become too engrossed in valuing things in the present without building forward to the future. And he was able to apply that to the financial markets. He was able to apply that to the healthcare systems. He was able to apply that to climate. And that has what, with all this drifting of our morals and our values in all of this, has brought us he was implying, and I would suggest he's got a lot of sense in what he's saying, to the crises that we're in of credit, of COVID, and of climate. But actually, as he was putting all that out there, I thought, do you know what? We can apply this to all of our lives. If we're investing too much in the present and dismissing the impact it's having on the future, we can apply that to our faith too. So the reading that we had from Hebrews reminds us of how we list, need to listen to what the prophets tell us about. Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. That is the reason for this season. What is our response? Do we believe in Jesus? Because if we do, Christ can turn our crisis of life from despair to hope. John paints this in the boldest of colours in the Gospel. And every year we would normally be gathering to hear this sung and told through the scripture readings. And we very often let that go in one ear and out the other ear as it kind of washes over us, which is wonderful. But this year, with the difference, I'd suggest that we can go to the bare bones of the gospel. And we can ponder on some of the precious truths that John draws out. Just as Mary pondered on things after the shepherds visited. And those bare bones are the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Grace often expressed as God's riches at Christ's expense. But grace is unmerited, undeserved, and always free. Grace, John Stott said, is love that cares. Love that stoops, love that rescues. And in Jesus, God has shown that he cares for us. In Jesus, God has stooped down and become one of us. In Jesus, God has rescued us. And that is the good news of Christmas. 
Because the child in the manger is also the saviour on the cross. Truth. The truth Jesus came to reveal was the truth about God. In his introduction to the adventure of Huckleberry Finn, Mark Twain wrote, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, made by Mr. Mark Twain, and he told the truth, mainly. There was things he stretched, but mainly he told the truth. Jesus told the truth, not mainly, not stretching it. Everything he spoke about God was true, and he even went the extra mile and was able to say that he was the truth. As he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In Jesus, our search for God is ended. So the drift of our values in society, and that's all of us, may have tipped us into this crisis of credit, COVID and climate. But there's hope. And yes, I know we've got the wonderful hope of the vaccine and that amazingly even being rolled out at the moment. But I'd like to suggest there's an even more amazing hope that we're reminded of at Christmas. And we can use this Christmas time to reset our bearings and focus afresh on God. Because through Jesus, God gives us hope for today and for tomorrow and for eternity. God, through Jesus, specializes in making situations and people work again. And this Christmas is worth doing because of that. Because we must remember that at the core, Christmas is more than warm feelings. Family dinners and big gifts. Christmas is God stepping in when all hope seems lost. To rescue the ones that the world would just as soon give up on. Christmas is precisely for those who need a hope that doesn't make sense. Christmas is for the people whom the holiday period is a stress because finances are tight and relationships are already strained. And these people are treasures in the kingdom of God. And I want to say to you now, if this is you, you are a treasure in the kingdom of God. You are what makes Christmas worth the time and church worth the trouble. And all of us, as we follow Jesus, are brokers of hope. And we need to be that now, this Christmas time, and into the year ahead. Remember, believe if you dare. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Amen. And so we say together our statement of faith. We believe in light beyond our seeing, flowing from the flame of life in God, who goes on creating in us and through us, down through the ages. We believe in healing beyond our knowing, from the Christ who knows our hearts 
and calls us into his marvellous light. We believe in the energy of God's Spirit, who walks with us and who strengthens us with power from on high. Amen. We pray for the church and for the world. Let's begin by praying for our world. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you came as a light to the world, that you reveal those places that are dark. Nothing is hidden with you. We pray for those imprisoned because they stand for what is true and what is good. We pray particularly for those prisoners in China and in Russia. We pray for those who live on the edge, those in migrant camps who have fled persecution in Syria and Myanmar. Help us, Lord, to see ways to help them and to provide for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own nation, for those in care homes, those isolated from their families, May there be comfort and joy this Christmas. We think of those affected by coronavirus, those who are separated from their families and those who've lost their jobs and no longer have a livelihood. We pray for our nation's relations with our neighbours, bring peace and harmony with our European neighbours, help government to see clearly and practically how to make a smooth and productive transition to new relationships. We pray particularly for our leaders, for wisdom, compassion and justice in their dealings. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our families, that this Christmas period will be a special time that we can remember and, re and that we will experience in a new way that you, Lord Jesus, came to live amongst us. Let us remember those we know who are ill this Christmas, those who are lonely, those who cannot look after themselves, those who are grieving, those who are isolated. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
And so we come to our time of sharing communion together. And a little bit later on in this part of the service, when I break the bread and offer it to you, that will be your moment, if you've got others who are sharing with you, to share the bread with one another and then the wine. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. You give us breath and speech that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to speak your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embraced a people as your own, and when they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us your body and blood, healing, forgiving, and making us whole. Jesus offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends. And taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit. Inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs and words of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen.
We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives into yours. Take us, renew and remake us. What we have been is past. What we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take us with you. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve our living Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And a very, very special peace-filled Christmas to you all.